Does your robot ever just slam into the wall or get caught on a mission? But then, without changing any of the code, in the next run everything is perfect? Don't worry, almost every FLL team has faced this issue before. There are three basic ways to navigate the FLL field. Driving straight, turning, and line following. Although these tasks might sound simple, you will eventually discover that the simple driving and turning code provided within the FLL software needs to be more precise in order for it to be good. There are also many ways to make these simple driving parts more consistent. First, let's talk about normal driving. It's a simple task, but it's much more complex under the surface. If you've ever just tried to use a regular drive straight block, like this, or like this, you'll probably find that it does not drive the robot straight. An enhancement for this is using gyro following or gyro driving. What this does is it uses the gyro to determine if the robot is off. For example, when the robot is slightly off like this, the gyro can see it and correct for it. Essentially what this does is it calculates how much the robot is off, which is the error, and then the robot is programmed to steer back onto the target gyro value. A simple version of this algorithm is the bigger the error, the bigger the correction is. A more sophisticated version is called PID. I won't get too much into how PID works, but this video by Builder235 covers it excellently. Instead of just looking at the error of itself, PID also looks at the change of error and the accumulation of error over time, so it can calculate the amount of adjustment needed. Another tip to make it more consistent is to slow down. This gives it time to correct and will make it have fewer errors overall. By slowing down everything, it can cost you time, which is very precious in FLL robot games. So I'd recommend implementing acceleration and deceleration into driving if slowing down is too much. Acceleration and deceleration will also help with the robot's accuracy and it will help it stay on target. Now let's talk about turning. There are two main types of turns, a pivot turn and a tank turn. A pivot turn drives one wheel forward or backward, and a take turn drives both wheels in opposite directions. Both of these are used in different situations. In tight spaces, a tank turn is better because it does the turn in place. If you need a wider turn, you would use a pivot turn. Many teams struggle getting trying to get their turns accurate. What we would suggest is slowing it down. If it starts getting too slow, you might need to code an acceleration and deceleration program for the turn. This is our team's favorite way of navigating the field because we find it the most consistent and the most efficient way. A line follower goes in between the white part and the black part of the lines on the FLL field. When the robot sees that it is too far into the black side, it'll steer itself closer to the white side, and the same the other way around. Similar to the gyro forward program, this can also use PID logic. It can also be simplified down to a few lines of code using a simpler form of PID logic. Adjusting the different values of the PID line follower can drastically change how it performs. We will be making another video about this soon. Many of the tips that help make gyro driving consistent can also be applied to line following. Slowing down and adjusting the PID values can all help the line follower perform better. Now that we have all the basics of navigation down, here's how to make the most of it with the robot game strategy. Every year, you will need to design trips for your robot to do. Our first tip is to plan your trip by how close the missions are to each other. It is easier to solve a mission that's close to one another and then have to solve one then drive all the way across the table to solve another one. Our next tip is to use the field to your advantage. What we mean by this is using the missions or the walls to align yourself. You can back into a wall to align or you can design a mechanism to align with the bases of missions. Next, you want your robot to move as little as possible. The more driving you have to do, the more inconsistent it gets. Plan your trip so you have the least amount of driving possible. So to put it all together, you want to design a trip in a way that you can maximize these three tips. This way your navigation can be the most consistent and reliable. That's all for this video. In my next video, I'll be talking about how we adjusted our PID values on our line followers to suit our robot the best. This is a more complex principle for PID logic. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching.